and glory blaring out over the tannoy. In the meantime, the Kiwis with their traditional Haka welcome, led by their captain, Quentin Pongia. Stephen Kearney is a pretty fearsome sight when he stands shoulder to shoulder with his captain and leads his men in the traditional Harker before the kickoff. So, the McAlpine Stadium is the venue for the first of three Lincoln tests between Great Britain and New Zealand. The British aiming to restore lost pride after the 3-0 whitewash in 1996. Phil Harrigan blows the whistle, Farrell gets the test match underway, and the first tackle of the test match is made by Chris Joint, helped out by Paul Newlove, and the man who felt the weight was Logan Swan. Good start there by Keith Senior, that really does lift your spirits. Went straight into the big fella, the prop forward, Joe Wagner. Quentin Pong here, the captain, gets to his feet, plays the ball with Sid Eru, and he finds Robbie Paul. The British boys know all about Robbie Paul. Cunningham was quickly in to tackle him. Amazing that Cunningham is playing in this match, but the Dr David Graham in the British camp has done a wonderful job. Now then, underneath the kick downfield is Jason Robinson. And the Kiwis have got nobody really in their side like this, but that's a good chase led by Jared McCracken and Stacey Jones to bring the grand final match winner to the ground. Well, it was a good chase by the Kiwis, but not the best kick. Right down the throat of Jason Robinson. They cannot afford to do that. Connolly tackled by Eru, Cunningham the dummy half. He looks left and finds Skullthorp, and Skullthorp offloads the pass. And Andy Farrell disappears under that challenge. Cunningham now, and he gives it to Tony Smith. This is Darren Fleary. First touch in Test match football for Darren Fleary. The 25-year-old was with Dewsbury and Keithley prior to joining Leeds in 1997. What a rags to riches story Darren Fleary's has been. Fine Richie kick. Barnett. Superb kick, good chase, and a big hit on the fullback Barnett. Well, a good start, Eddie. For the Great Britain boys, they're up for this one, that is for sure. You can see how they're moving up off that mark, out wide especially. They're forcing the Kiwis to go down the middle. That's the ploy. Ruben Wickey pulled down by Lee Gilmore. Hero to Stacey Jones, and on it goes to Kevin Iro and Connolly wrestles him to the ground. Halligan was the dummy half. This now is Stephen Kearney getting the Kiwis up towards the halfway line. Iru again at dummy half. What a contest that will be between Gary Conley and Kevin Iro, two big fellas. Radlinski picks it up after trapping it with the outside of his boot. Good chase though, Logan Swan in quickly with the tackle on the British fullback. Senior now from dummy half. Keith Senior, Wembley winner with the Sheffield Eagles. Robinson, he will scamper away once more. Taking on Sean Hoppy, but Hoppy stood his ground and with reinforcement from Robbie Paul brought him to ground. Good tactics there, Andy Goodwear, the Great Britain coach, obviously has told Robinson get involved early as possible. Those runs from dummy half, they can really build your confidence and also put doubt in the defence of the Kiwis. Van going to miss the tackle, Goodway watched as Gilmore made a few more priceless metres. This now is Chris Joint, good tackling on him by Jared McCracken. McCracken, of course, once upon a time played for Chris Joint St. Helens. Tony Smith under pressure from Robbie Paul. He was hit late, got the kick in, it stands up in the field of play, and Richie Barnett will run this ball back. Good kick and chase yet again, and we saw on that graphic just a moment ago the fact that Great Britain, four runs from dummy half. Obviously, the tactics are paying off. It's very early, but they are an equal match for the Kiwis at the moment. Three and a half minutes of the test match gone. Tackle two. That's Come Joe Vangener. Sid Eru will make the little run. Senior got to Come him. And uh, Farrell came across to check just in case. Wiki is the dummy half. 
Robbie Paul to Stacey Jones, danger whenever Stacey Jones gets the ball and when this fella gets it, Keeney, but the British have done their homework and Frank Endicott, the New Zealand national coach, he knows just how important this game is to the game in New Zealand, but my word, the same must be said for the game in this country too. Good kick there by the little scrum half, Stacey Jones. He'll take control of the field kicking throughout this game. But just previous to that, it was a wonderful tackle by Tony Smith. He was not fooled by the dummy that the New Zealanders used. He was one of the big forwards coming through, but Smith made sure he got down very, very quickly. Well, the first scrum, really, that we've seen the British team form and uh, packing down at the back is Paul Scoffthorpe. There is the big, tall figure of Andy Farrell receiving it now at standoff. So that's the ploy from Great Britain. They play the seven forwards in the opening 20 minutes. Farrell will play standoff. Scoffthorpe will join the pack. And then Yeston Harris will come on. Interesting to see there that the first scrum down. Notice how the Kiwis, they push very hard. It's something that the Great Britain forwards are not used to. They barely just lean against each other to bring the ball back into play in the scrums that we use in England. Justin Harris, the man of steel for 1998, waiting his chance on the bench. Notice he put the, the uh, gum shield in then. I wonder whether he will get an early introduction to Test Match football. It certainly hasn't been a ferocious opening forward battle from the Kiwi, Steve-O, but that kick is charged down. He's put it down, though. Logan Swan dropped it. Under a lot of pressure. Logan Swan had the opportunity, you can see Farrell there. He took an eternity to get into it, and Swan had the opportunity, well spotted by the referee Harrigan. It flicked off a Kiwi, and because of that all the British players then were onside. Did well to catch that Gary Connolly, particularly under the pressure from Kevin Iro. Now then, here goes Robinson again. Iru gets to him, you get the feeling that uh, now the New Zealand forwards are starting to find their pace. Well, good tactics yet again from Great Britain, we saw Robinson running from that dummy half. Now the one thing it does do, it ensures that New Zealand first and second markers have to work overtime. That means it's a big pack and they could tire late in the game. Not really battle-hardened, the Kiwis. Andy Farrell, of course, one of the nine Wigan players who enters this match after the grand final last week. Just hope that uh, they have had sufficient time to recover from that epic contest. Joint gets to his feet. This is Radlinski. Radlinski hammers the ball over the top, looking for the touch on this side, but it runs touch in goal, just too long. Barnett was able to just watch that bounce its way dead. Ready the kicking around, Great Britain. That was a forward pass. Well, it was very close to it indeed. Here is ball in field to Sean Hoppy. Looked about half a metre forward from up here. And there it is, and you could see that he had to take a step forward. Well, he was looking to get away with it, the hooker, Sid Iru, but that's a big hit. Massive hit by Fleary. Britain have got it back. That's what he's in the game for. The debut boy, the prop forward, Fleary, has come up with a big hit, the first one of the game. And Britain in possession in good field placing here with Gilmore. Outstanding season for the young player of the year. Look at this. It was a fair one as well, right across the chest. Pongia felt that one. Here he goes, now he's on attack. Well, it takes something like that on your debut sometimes to just lift you. And to lift your teammates too, and Britain piling forward, four tackles gone. Cunningham wants more the dummy half, he looks left, and he finds Tony Smith. And Smith gives it then to Farrell, and Farrell gives it back to Smith, good ball on the run around. Here now is Radlinski, Radlinski then to Robinson. Can Robinson make anything of this? Hoppy got to him, and Hoppy scrags him to the floor. Last tackle here for Great Britain, senior at dummy half. It's now with Smith, high kick underneath the post for Britain to chase. Who wants it? Ball bounces into the arms of Connolly! And Connolly, well, the ball got down eventually, but he was held up in the in-goal area, and it's the turnover. What a beautiful kick, what a good take, but what wonderful defence! Halligan gets underneath him, over the top with Jones. Halligan and Jones, well, what about a try-saver from that? But what a superb kick by the little halfback, Tony Smith. Here we are once! Gary Connolly then so close to 
the try on his return to the Test Arena after a four-year absence. Last played for Great Britain against the Aussies in 1994. The first really big decision that Bill Harrigan had to make, the match referee, and Steve-O, there was no hesitation from the Australian referee. He blew the whistle and he ordered the turnover because that was on the last tackle. No reference to the video ref. He was in a good position with the Australian, and rightly so. Well, that's the sort of thing that we want to do, and that's a penalty. They've lost the plot. Joe Vangana. Vangana. I think he lost his cool against Darren Cleary, and that's exactly what we want. Cleary, of course, brought about the big hit, the first of the game, and Vangana said, I don't like that. Neither did the referee. Great Britain have the Kiwis on the roll. Well, Fleary there to upset them, and Fleary has upset them, and so has Cowie there with that shoulder charge into the chest of McCracken. Give McCracken his due, though, he came back for a second snap. So here come Britain again with Fleary. On it goes to Gilmore, and Gilmore applies the brakes. That's good play. Vangana went for a big hit, missed him, but he was eventually hauled to ground by Iru. Now then, Cunningham. Long pass out wide from Farrell, not the best. It was behind Senior and it bounces into touch. The Great Britain captain there just uh, losing the plot for a moment. Well, he lost the way. The idea was there. You could see the three first line of attack. The dummy runner and Farrell was expecting Senior to be at least two or three metres behind. He will not be pressed with that, just raises the arm and says, sorry to that man, Senior. Big night for him, Keith Senior playing on the wing, normally plays centre. Ruben Wicke now, bounced through Radlinski, but couldn't get away from Farrell. Stacey Jones scampers into dummy half. Robbie Paul, Logan Swan, wrapped up there by Connolly. Tackle standing up, tackle completed. Kiwis in possession with Stephen Kenny, one of the most feared second rowers in the world. New Zealand Player of the Year in 1997. Now Stacey Jones had a wow of a series in the World Club Championship last year. McCracken carries the bat long for the Kiwis, almost up to halfway. Sid Ero is the dummy half, looks right and finds Jones. Jones's kicking will be so important to New Zealand. Radlinski collects the ball off the ground. Good chase upfield, though, by Jones, who put the kick in. Good work by Jones, it needed to be as well, and here comes Billy the Wiz yet again, the tactics. It's creating all sorts of problems in the Kiwi defence, they're having to scramble back. But I must say, the Great Britain forwards really have taken it to them, but that's a mistake, and they've got away with it, that'll be play on. In fact, it's back to zero on the tackle count, because there was a New Zealand hand hunting it there, and I think it was Logan Swan who got fingertips to it. This is new love now, tackled by Vangana. Well, Logan Swan, that's a second chance that he's had to get onto a loose ball. One was from the kick. Oh, big hit. Did well there, Gilmore, to get out of the way there. Great Pongier. tackle by Pongia, the New Zealand captain, and Gilmore blowing hard. Here now is Fleary. But the Robinson runs from dummy half, contributing to three of the Great Britain seven. Most and he's certainly causing them problems. Is he ever? And the most important thing about the Britain's defence is the fact that the Kiwis are finding it difficult to get over the advantage line. It's one out football from the Kiwis so far. Desperate tackle there by Kearney on Robinson. Here's Chris Joint. He gives it to his teammate, New Love, teammate at club and country level. Senior is the dummy half. And Tony Smith under pressure from Ruben Wickey was hit a bit late. But into the arms of Richie Barnett. Barnett these days filling the fullback shoes vacated by Matthew Rich. Well, you see the big hit from the big centre, Ruben Wicky is pretty strong. Well, I don't know about you, Eddie, but I'm a bit uh, disturbed about all this music that keeps I think about a disco. <laughs> We're here to do a test match. Will someone tell them to turn it off? Well, they're just trying to whip the crowd up, whip the enthusiasm up on the terraces. Ruben Wicky gets to his feet, plays the ball a little wearily, a little gingerly so early in the test match. This is Stacey Jones, that's a great ball, Logan Swan. And the Kiwis have got an overlap there, it's with Halligan, fed by Kevin Iroh, but the British defence scrambles back. 
Good work there by Swan. Gary Connolly came out of position, got caught tight. Oh, that's a beautiful kick from Stacey Jones. That could be a try. That could be a try for Kearney. The referee has a look and talks to his touch judge. And he'll hand this one on to the video ref. It was a beautiful kick. It caught Britain really on the back foot. And it was obviously okay, a planned a move. And Stephen Kearney went for it. First before it goes but you can see here Redlinski trying and to get to does, it. We want to check the onside. This is try time, I'm afraid. They'll give this one. That's an excellent try from Kearney, providing okay, so if he was a clean onside. Touchdown, you want to then check the onside. Well, what a beautiful kick, though, from Stacey Jones. Remember, the Kiwis had made their first break of the game, and it just caught Great Britain napping on the blind side. And as Eddie mentioned, it was definitely a planned move. Is he onside? Well, the grounding is what the video referee is looking at at the moment. Did he have full control of the football? It appears that way. And if he's happy with that, then he'll have to just check the on or offside. Well, there's no doubt about the downward pressure. This is the offside situation. There he is out wide. Ooh, he could be just half a metre. Could be offside by a fraction. I think he might be all right. That's the impact, and you'll find he's just about six inches behind the kicker. <laughs> so you can see it on the line. I think they'll give this one. Yep. Watch this step out wide. Yeah, it's left yes. the boot. Yes, He's onside, is Kearney. Well, what a great move. You've got to take your hat off to the inventiveness there from the Kiwis. It was superb. And this is going to be a try. And first blood in the test match to New Zealand. It was looked at so closely and looked at so quizzically by the video referee. But Stephen Kearney gets first blood to the New Zealanders in this first Lincoln test. It all came about from the break. Watch how Connolly was caught there. He'd gone in out of the line. He knew that they were in trouble. Hyro did the rest. They wrapped up Halligan, but from here, watch how the defence is very slow on the blind side. Stacey knows it. That is superb. They don't come much better than that, I'm afraid. Beautifully weighted kick from the little halfback, Stacey Jones. Well, the man that they call the best ball handling forward in the world comes up Trump with four points. Stephen Kearney scored it, but put it down to the kick from Stacey Jones. Fantastic thinking from the little scrum half, and so quick over the ground, this big second rower, Stephen Kearney. Grounds his 24th appearance for his country with the opening try in this first Test match. The New Zealanders are waiting to get the kicking tee brought out to Daryl Halligan. It's on its way now at long last. But the New Zealanders were the victim of some fantastic tries a fortnight ago scored by the Australians. Some breathtaking tries the green and gold scored in Auckland. And I think we've seen one that almost matched it. That was so good. Tremendous. No fluke about it. And here's the man setting the ball on the pedestal. He's here for one thing, to do exactly what he's about to launch. Hopefully, in his case, over the black dot. Round about 90% success rate throughout his entire career. Wow. Yes, they say he's one of the best goal kickers in the world, if not the best, Daryl Halligan. And that is the reason why. Anywhere within 20, 25 metres of the posts, Halligan pops them over. Big gamble, there's Connolly, he took the gamble to come in, shut them down. Ball over the top, look at the overlap. Great Britain did well to come back to scramble, they took Halligan down. But from here, it was sheer poetry. The kick from Jones, Kearney gets the downward pressure. We were caught napping. Well, Stephen Keeney was a 25 to one shot to be the first try scorer tonight in this test match. A match, by the way, that the bookies could not call. They said that this game would start absolutely level pegging. It's so close between these two. 6-0, the Kiwis lead. 15 and three-quarter minutes gone. Steve-O, you lost your bet on Leeds. Did you have a little flutter on Mr Kearney? 
No, but out of bed on the Great Britain. Still plenty of time. That maybe just shake us out of it because we got off su to such a good start. Maybe perhaps we just had a lapse in concentration in defence. It was not the best attempt there by Gary Connolly to come out of the line. It was brilliant individual skill, though. First from Jones with the kick and then from Kearney. Radlinski was scrambling and scrambling and just couldn't get their fingertips to it to knock the ball dead. Anyway, that's all now history. Britain now will search for the equaliser. And that's good defence. Fleary, Joint and Farrell getting to Richie Barnett, the full-back. Iru flicks the ball inside to Pongia. Well, I suspect now that the Kiwis having that six-point lead will just drive it through with the forwards. Here's Logan Swan. Tried to offload and lost it under pressure from Connolly. Knock on. Yeah, will it must it be? be a knock-on against Logan Swan, was it? Did Connolly go for it? We've seen it's it several... It's head, head and feed Britain. We've seen it several times. Connolly, such a strong man, upper body strength, is well-renowned throughout the world for his arm wrestling. And he whips the ball away. Well, that should have been play on. Either way, we've got the ball from the scrum. And here is New Love, and he tries to step inside and nearly does. But Wiki was in there quickly to cut him down. Now Keith Senior taking on McCracken. McCracken standing firm. He was a wing, wasn't he, when he played for the Saints? Certainly a three-quarter, and now he's in the second row. Played in the centres, didn't he, at Nosey Road, 92 at 93 season. Interesting to see there the first run from Dummy Half on Kieran Cunningham. A lot of doubt about his fitness going into this match. Here's Farrell. Gets the ball away. Took the gamble. Smith managed to retain possession. Dale Lawton looks like he's preparing to come on. The Sheffield Eagles prop forward. High kick from Radlinski. Underneath it and claiming it is Barnett and Sculthorpe with the tackle. Took it well there, but you could see how he was protected. There was only Sculthorpe on the chase. Pretty high one from Radlinski. Gave the chance for his fellow players to get up there and really put the hit on the fullback. They failed to do that. Interesting, Steve. Oh, it's Dale Lawton who's going to be the first change by Andy Goodway and not Yestin Harris, as we all widely anticipated. Well, I think he's probably doing it right. There's no point in trying to offer to the Kiwis that he's panicking. They would have expected, Frank Endicott, the Kiwi coach, would have thought that perhaps there will be a change in the forwards. But I think he'll only will bring on Yustin Harris when he feels that they're struggling to get points. They're struggling in the moment to subdue Stacey Jones, but Farrell got a good tackle in on him. Ira with the kick, and Jason Robinson not interested. Let's the ball run across the front of his body, and Iru finds touch. Been around a while, City Aru, 15 tests, this is his 16th for the New Zealand side. Spotted on the blind side there, and it was interesting to see how Jason Robinson just pulled away from it. On comes Dale Lawton then. So Andy Goodway makes the first change, and it's Darren Fleary who is the man replaced. Well, I must say, Fleary did his job, came up with a wonderful hit that... Dislodged the ball, gave Great Britain a chance of the possession. Twelve tackles made by Darren Fleary, so his job done in the opening 19 minutes. The players are playing on, but the referee wants the scrum to form properly. Number 15, Dale Lawton, on his international debut for Great Britain. No, he is a Scottish international, and there's a young man who, not long ago, was on loan to Wakefield Trinity last year. Somebody who proves that you really can make it to the top with determination, just like Darren Fleary. It's been a dream year for him, hasn't it? For Fleary and also the man that's replaced him, Dale Lawton. And there's his first taste of Test match football, a really big hit. This is Cunningham, stands and able to get the ball away to Tony Smith. And Smith a real handful for Kearney and Logan Swan, eventually Swan gets the better of him. Cunningham, dummy half, off the ground into the arms of Farrell, and Farrell will kick, but Halligan has shuttled back. That bounces over the head of the 32-year-old wing. The oldest man on the Kiwi party, and trapped there by Gary Connolly. A little fumble gave Connolly just the opportunity he was seeking. Here's Kevin Iroh. 
Composure is what's needed now by the British boys. Get back into the swing of things, don't lose their cool. Don't give away silly penalties when you've got the New Zealanders way back in their own quarter. Scrambling defence from Great Britain, that was Sean Hoppy who was hauled to ground. He now is Barnett once, uh, Ruben Wickey rather once more. Big hit though from Senior. Paul to Pongia. Well, you can see on the white shot, Great Britain using the sliding defence. We got caught out once, Connolly coming out of it very quickly. Big kick over the top from Stacey Jones again, but just too big. This takes a skip and a hop and goes dead in goal. Been around a while, Stacey Jones. He knows what it's all about. It's fifth in general play. Uh, there's nothing better than to utilise and work that blind side. Well, great cheer in the background because they've seen Yestin Harris off the bench and stripped and ready for action. The country in general knows, I think, that Yestin Harris could be the man to win this Test match, but 22-year-old Harris, man of steel, he's under immense pressure as he takes his place on the field, and now he does. When you talk about pressure, Dale Lawton felt the big hit from Pongia. Great little run from Radlinski, though, and Lee Gilmore, the man to be replaced by Yestin Harris. <laughs> and here's Chris Joint. Well, if ever a man was expected to produce this, is it for Harris. Good hands by Great Britain, Connolly taking on Halligan and also Stacey Jones. Well, the appearance of Yustin Harris seems to have lifted the players. Interesting to see how Harris run in and went to dummy half, pushed Cunningham out of the way. It bounces back off Senior, dumped into the arms of Radlinski. Radlinski trying to dribble it past. Oh. Robbie Paul, but couldn't do so. And it's the turnover. Well, the chance was there. It went right the way through Senior's hands. Oh, what a great chance there. Putting himself about is the fullback Chris Radlinski. Sharing the kicking duties with his skipper, Andrew Farrell. Steve, when uh, Harris came onto the field then, uh, it was almost like if you turn it round the other way and think about fellas like Paul Gascoigne and David Beckham in the uh, soccer, it was almost the moment for Harris to claim that sort of a reputation. Sure is, well, I mean, he's had a great season, hasn't he? He's won every award, apart from the fact about getting the winner's ring last week in the grand final. This is Kearney, scorer of the only try so far. Good tackling there by Farrell. And Kearney comes up with a mistake, claiming the ball was knocked out of his hands. I think you'll find a big second row was trying to offload here, back on the inside. No interference there. Oh, it was a good big hit, wasn't it? Oh, well, there, that's the was on the blind side. <laughs> it's one-on-one -on -one anyway. Big smile on the face of the British skipper. He knows they're not out of this by a long way. They've got the skills out there. All they've got to do is try to utilise them. Here's Radlinski. Now Harris. And Harris going through a ruck of his own players before he's met by Kearney and Jones again. Here's Cowie. Well, it's Harris's style that could confuse them. Good barnstorming run from Cowie. The ball is flipped into the arms of Robinson. Britain lucky to get away with that, really, but this is Robinson now. Bounces off Robbie Paul, McCracken drops on him. Britain making good use of the football laterally, but not making any incisions into New Zealand territory, really. Well, the problem there is that Robinson was working hard, running across the face of the defence, but there was no dummy run, there's nobody coming back on the inside on different angles. They've just lost the way a little bit now. Farrell. They've got to stand a little bit deeper, give themselves more room to move. Yes, they're very flat at the moment. Here's Harris. Tried to throw the dummy and go round Sid Eru, but he would have none of it. It's the last one for Great Britain. It's now with Tony Smith, who dumped it over the top, and Halligan read the script there. Too easy, that, for Halligan. He's been around too long to be fooled by that. Sure has. They brought him back for the last game, of course, against the... Australians. Penalty now for the Kiwis, two men and a tackle. Well, you see that replay of the good work from Halligan. There were two men in the tackle here. Lawton and Connolly getting involved there with a the full-back Burnett. 
just about to say that, of course, uh, Halligan come out of international retirement to come not only on this tour, but played in that last game against the Australians when Matthew Ridge retired. But Van Gunner sure. is withdrawn and uh, Nathan Kales comes on from the Parramatta Eels. Another of the new breed here. Only his third cap and only 20 years of age, Kales comes on as a blood bin replacement. Cut on the top of the head of Joe Vangener. That's good defence from Harris. Rubbing up Logan Swan. Ready well, lined up the loose forward. Well, it's been a bright start for Harris, and Great Britain needs something just to pull something out of the hat. Hoppy to McCracken. Over the halfway line he goes. Cunningham got to him. So did Sculthorpe. Last one. Good defence from Britain. It's Iru will plant the ball deep into their territory, but just too deep. Made his uh, 90 place test debut in 1995 against the French. Two tries when New Zealand beat Australia last year. Interesting, Iru. interesting to see that the uh, in goal area quite narrow here at McAlpine Stadium. Yes, I noticed uh, at Auckland two weeks ago when the Kiwis took on the Australians. It was a pretty narrow in goal area there too. Here now is Cowie. Forced his way really into this British team. This year with some great performances as Wigan won the grand final. Well, Great Britain enjoying the better of the possession but uh, losing on the scoreboard. Lawton now. Good run. That's how to go into him. But I have to point the finger at Kieran Cunningham. He must have gone into this goal, a bad mistake there by Tony Smith. And I was just about to say that Kieran Cunningham, I think he's only made one run from the dummy half. So it's we... a miracle he's even playing, they reckon. Well, we said yesterday in the programme that it was not the done thing to go into a test match with anybody that's not 100%. We know the quality of this man, we know he's a top-class player. But it doesn't matter how good you are, if you're going to a, a match like this carrying an injury, you're always going to be found out. Connolly is all round Kevin Iro. That's a real battle, that one. Halligan dummy half. Logan Swan now. Picked out by Lawton. 28 and a half minutes of the first test gone. New Zealand ahead 6-0 and on the attack here with Kalis. Quite content, the Kiwis just to crisscross with the forwards. Don't be surprised if they get close for a one-pointer. Go for the drop goal. They know the importance. Robbie Paul plays the ball. Good scampering run there from Iru, and he's through that first line of defence, and Britain have to regather their thoughts and haul him down. New Zealand so close to the British post now. It's a good high kick across field. Testing Senior this, and Senior does well. Big, tall winger, and Senior sailed above them all. What a great take there. Hoppy was all over him, and Senior took it with so much confidence, it had to be. It was a beautiful kick from Stacey Jones. Remember, Jones provided the kick that got Kane in the first try of the game. Connolly almost evaded the first tackle from Halligan, but he couldn't evade Kevin Iro. It's got to be a penalty. Well, he looks at Bill Halligan, and uh, Halligan says no. Well, Robinson getting through a ton of work. Big problem is, when it comes to him making a break, well, there's the first one from Kieran. This is Farrell. Little short, sharp right from Kalis there. Just saying that if Jason Robinson going through all this work, I hope he's got the energy when the chance comes for him to make the break. Harris, dummy half to Radlinski. Just had to kick downfield. Barnett's able to pick it up easily, 10 metres from his own line. Will come again and gives it to Halligan. That's a great chase by Cunningham. Great tackle. Here's Hoppy. Tackled by Harrison Newlove. Great Britain waiting to make a change. Terry O'Connor, another forward, will come on shortly. Good hit there by Dale Lawton. Kalis felt that one. Kearney now. Ooh, joint over the top. Got away with it. Brilliantly released by uh, Kearney. 
to Barnett and then by Stacey Jones to Robbie Paul. They do love to keep this ball alive in the tackle, the New Zealanders. And Henry Paul comes on for Sid Iru. Kick over the top. Radlinski read that one perfectly. Interesting, Steve-O, that uh, the two pivotal positions, as Cowie comes to the sideline to be replaced by O'Connor, the two pivotal positions in last week's grand final, Henry Paul and Yestin Harris, they are both starting this test match on the bench. And Paul now back in the side. But of course, uh, when New Zealand defeated Australia in that very first test earlier in this year, it was Henry Paul that played hooker, Sid Eru was injured, so it's a good ploy there by Frank Endicott. Penalty to Great Britain, Ruben Wickey. Well, they've been getting very close to it. A couple of minutes ago, Kevin Iro, the centre partner for Ruben Wickey, had a real swinging arm. Now then, here's the first touch for Terry O'Connor. 11th hour call-up to this British squad, and here he is playing in the first test. Now Lawton. But what would uh, Andy Goodway in Great Britain give for a try now just before half-time? The Kiwis conceded one against the Aussies two weeks ago, and this is Tony Smith, and Tony Smith bounces through two, and in the end, the defence arrived, and Barnett hauled him down. Newlock trying to go on his own from Dummy Half, Hoppy with the tackle on him. That's a great run from Smith, it's lifted the crowd, it's lifted the players. Senior dumped to the ground by McCracken. Shake of the head from Goodway, not impressed, he might be now. This is Harris, Harris, the ball goes to ground, Connolly flicks out wide, looking for Robinson. Robinson hoists the kick. It's not the best one either. Robinson collects the kick and then gives it to Harris. And Britain is still not done. Long ball to Senior. Senior flicks it back to Harris. This is good play from Britain. Harris, back it goes to Joint. And Joint is eventually grounded. It was the last tackle, but Britain tried and were inventive, but it just didn't come off. Well, they may have not scored, but that will really lift them. They kept the ball alive. Robinson realised it wasn't the best kick through, but he went to it straight away. Kept the ball alive, caught it. But what a run by Tony Smith. Little live wire went, ducked under two would-be tacklers. Oh, that's a bad pass. And it was Henry Paul who put the pass into Iro. And Britain have got it back, and here's Robinson. And Robinson applies the brakes and comes back this way. Again, the skin going Robinson. Reminiscent of Old Trafford last week. Ducking under the challenges. Big opportunity here for Britain with joint. Now with Harris. Harris to New Love. And the New Zealand defence stands firm with Wiki, but for how long? Harris over the top to Smith, Smith on to Farrell, Farrell straightens it up, Farrell, and it goes to Smith, and from somewhere, Richie Barnett came up and cleaned Tony Smith out. Still Britain on the attack, though. Long pass, they went for the long pass, and Hoffey the got the intercept almost, but put the knock on down. The idea was there from Harris, and Hoppy knew that he was caught out wide. It was try time. Harris would... The run from Farrell back on the inside, but what a tackle from the fullback, Burnett. What a wonderful defensive effort there. But Hoppy came across to cut out the pass from Houston Harris. Senior was in for the try, no doubt about that. Yes, if it had missed it, Britain would be celebrating now. As it is, Tony Smith feeding the scrum. Here's Harris, short ball to Connolly, watched all the way by Robbie Paul and Kevin Iro. Now Harris into the arms of O'Connor, who drives it in and loses it, and he claims the ball was stolen, but the referee will have none of it, and Stephen Keeney laughs at him. Well, how close can they go? Less than five minutes to the break. And he did lose it, I'm afraid. Keeney was just pulling at the head. Bad mistake, I'm afraid, there from Terry O'Connor. It's lifted a gear, though, as this game. It was Britain's third handling error. And it puts the Kiwis back in possession as we approach half-time. And this is Wiki. Come on, get up there, stop pulling it down. Sean Hoppy's the man at dummy half. 
quickly into the arms of his scrum half, Stacey Jones. Long ball then into the arms of Robbie Paul. And Paul will attack that right-hand side of the defence again. And, and this time on. he puts it down. Kevin Iro, a little bit of a knock-on there, well spotted. Back on the inside, and that was a deems a knock-on. Wanted him to come back on the inside, Farrell did well. The strong arms made the mistake, and Kevin Iro came up with it. Well, Great Britain need to turn this uh, pressure now into four points. Referee telling Logan Swan to lock in at the back of the scrum. The ball's now out with Smith into the arms of Harris. And then it goes on then to Connolly. Connolly is tackled by Wickey, and Wickey pulled him down there. Connolly, a second effort, could have been penalised. New Love plays it to Senior. Well, Great Britain have to stand a little bit further back, give themselves room. Here's a corner. Quick play of the ball, that's what's needed. Get it away from this area. That'll be a penalty. It is a penalty. Logan Swan, a judge to have stolen the ball, but I think that Terry O'Connor was a little lucky because I rather fancy he lost it there anyway. Well, you see the loose forward eventually come in. There's a big hit to twist him around. Ponju was in there. I think he lost it there. And then Swan did that. That was enough to convince the referee, the Australian Bill Harrigan, moves forward Logan Swan. The penalty was given on the nod of the touch judge, I can tell you. And this is uh, within kicking distance for Andy Farrell. And that's why he's elected to try and reduce the arrears with just a couple of minutes to go to half-time. And it's the right option. Both sides and all the players realise that it's going to be a tough encounter. Chances few and far between. Points, as always, so vital. This could be a big turning point. This could be a huge lift for the British boys. Well, he's only kicked 16 goals for his country, Andy Farrell. But he's in the history books. He became the youngest ever Great Britain forward on his debut against New Zealand in 1993 when he got a try from second row against the Kiwis. Farrell with the kick. And if the Kiwis have got Daryl Halligan, Great Britain have got Andrew Farrell. This is the incident that brought about it, and I think Eddie might have been right that uh, Terry O'Connor may just well have been very lucky indeed. There was the replay of the kick. The referee, uh, Bill Harrigan, just uh, stopping the clock as we have uh, a small parade going on at McAlpine Stadium, a couple of streakers. They're off the field. The test match will continue. They look like twins to me. This is Joe Vangana, who has returned. And we've got 40 seconds of the first half left. Oh, that was a risky bit of business there. They got away with it because there was a British hand in it and the referees wiped it down to zero on the tackle count. This is Ruben Wickey and this now is here, Robbie Paul. Great tackle from Radlinski. It had to be as well. They were streaming up out wide. Britain defence, it's still all at sea out wide there. And he went for the intercept of Connolly. Stacey Jones has it okay, for New Zealand. He knew that Curley was turning in the tackle to offload. Didn't get away with it. Pressure time now. Joint wraps up the man with the football. And the referee won't blow the whistle yet. They're going to be caught cold. Britain are caught cold. Vagana. Vagana scores the try. The referee absolutely right. The siren went, but the whistle had to blow the whistle. The referee, as he's telling Britain, he has to blow the whistle when there's a break in play. Great Britain had stopped, and Joe Vangana didn't. And Vangana saw the hole open up for him. And that is so, so schoolboy error from Great Britain. And Vangana 
has pinched a try right on the stroke of half time, oh, no, right on the hour, siren. Yeah. I just cannot believe this. Look at the face there of Chris Joint. It's when the referee blows the whistle. You play to the whistle, not to the horn, not to the guy tooting outside selling ice cream either. It's a whistle you stay around. And we have not only been caught cold, we could just have thrown this first test away. The ball has to be dead. Was the ball dead when the siren sounded? He was in the action of getting up to play the football. Now this will be two more points off the boot of Halligan. Well, this test match has suddenly turned upside down. In the closing two or three seconds, Bill Harrigan didn't blow the whistle. The siren sounded, but in the referee's view, the ball was not dead. So have Great Britain fallen here to the sucker punch of all sucker punches? The inquest will surely continue at half-time, but what that Joe Vangana try means is that New Zealand are ahead by 12 points to two. Absolutely incredible, and Great Britain, well, they will be hanging their heads in shame in that dressing room during the half-time break. Coming up for you on Sunday at midday on Sky Sports 2. It's Football League action as Bolton take on Sunderland. At 3 o'clock, Sky Sports 3. This week's Super Sunday comes from the Riverside as Middlesbrough take on Nottingham Forest. And our third game on Sunday from Spain, Deportivo against Mallorca. 6.30 here on Sky Sports 1. But right now we have half-time in this first Lincoln test here at the McAlpine Stadium. The Kiwis are ahead by 12 points to 2 but the entire uh, ground here is absolutely buzzing about the incident just on the stroke of half-time when the New Zealanders pinch that second try. Now, the situation is that the referee is the sole judge of time in the match. He has to blow the whistle for half-time when the ball is dead. And Malcolm Reilly, Great Britain have gone down here to a real sucker punch. I mean, everyone packed in. Better they have, mate. It was right against the run of play. Uh, I thought England sustained some terrific pressure pressure on uh, New Zealand. And they came away in the dying seconds. I was stunned, you know, and so was Great Britain. You, but the ball's, the game's never over until the whistle goes and the referee calls it. Well, that's right. Let's take a look at what actually did happen. Let's try and slow it down. You can maybe hear when the siren comes in. There you see Chris Joint is making the tackle. The tackle is complete. He's now in the act of regaining his feet. Richie Barnett, and there's the, the siren sounding there at that point. So has he officially, technically, put the ball back into play in the view of the referee? Uh, no, he hasn't. Or uh, rather, yes, he has. He's in, in the view of the referee. He's actually bringing the ball back into play, Sean. And so I noticed Chris Joint, he just, as he heard the siren, turned and walked away. Well, obviously, Chris thought the, uh, the half was over, but... The old, the old rule applies, doesn't it? The old cliche, you play to the whistle. It just goes to prove that if you play this game long enough, something is bound to happen. And you now that's a major shock to the Great Britain side as we, we see them here. You know, uh, they're probably lamenting that because they've played so well in the first half. They've really defended well. A couple of lapses out wide occasionally, but they've stopped the power play of, of uh, New Zealand. They've stopped the offloads. And I'm sure they would have been happy to go in with, a, with it being down six points to two. Well, that's right. I mean, to be fair, Great Britain have defended tremendously, but the one thing we were saying, Steve-O, before the match, it's all well and good defending, and Great Britain can defend. But to win test matches, you've got to score tries. And only on about two occasions we've actually threatened the line. Well, we had the big opportunity, didn't we, when Darren Fleary, that was the reason why they gave him the debut here, because he came come up with a big hit. New Zealand lost the football and it gave us the opportunity. It was a kick from Tony Smith. Gary Connolly had this wonderful chance, but you've got to hand it to the Kiwis' defence. They came back there. We I mean, look at this, Jones and Halligan. How on earth they stopped Gary Connolly? He's one of the strongest players 
in rugby league football. They did exceptionally well there. It was on the last. And then look at this incident out wide. Beautiful. They caught there. Gary Connolly was really, really caught out. If you're using a slide in defence, you must make sure that you go with the team across. But I'm afraid Connolly was caught out. But this is sheer skill. This is wonderful rugby league football. This is no fluke. Kearney knew exactly what Stacey Jones was going to do. And I'm afraid that was the first time we got caught. We had the opportunity. The introduction of Houston Harris. Farrell made the break. Beautiful support play by Smith. But again, the scrambling defence from the Kiwis has been absolutely outstanding. This could have been a try here. Senior out wide. Hoppy took the gamble. He was caught cold. The Kiwi right winger knew that he was in trouble, went for it. And then, look at this. Hey, fellas, it ain't over. Never mind any fat lady singing. This guy's going in for a try. And it's going to be very, very important now for Andy Goodway, not only to just say to these players, keep calm, but you've got to make sure that they don't start talking to the referee. It's gone. It's finished. It's another 40 minutes. Take no notice of it, because if any of the players start saying, hey, come on, Bill, that was a bit bad, that was a bit... This, they've got to concentrate on their game plan. They've got to get the ball out wide, and they've got to try to take the risk. That's why Harris has been introduced. They've got to try to get the ball out wide and stand deeper, give themselves space. I'd rather fancy that Andy Goodway won't be uh, terribly impressed at half-time. Malcolm, really, he will surely be, be saying exactly that to his players. Keep your calm, keep your composure, but for goodness sake, play to the whistle. Eddie will, I'm, I'm sure. Look, Great Britain have got to get back on the, on the scoreboard straight away to get back into this game. New Zealand have, have defended, as Steve-O says, extremely well. But to be fair, you know, Great Britain have had as good an exchange with the ball as, as uh, New Zealand. But they've taken the chances, New Zealand, and that's the, the 12 points they've got in front. There are problems on the uh, Great Britain edge defence, and New Zealand's caught them out on a number of occasions, and Gary Connolly must... He's been screaming for help out there, and they've got to react to him because there's opportunities, and if they start letting New Zealand offload the ball in this second period, they'll pick more points up. Well, there's no doubt about that, Sean, and I just do feel a little sorry for Yestin Harris. There's a young man who's come onto this field there, and the reaction that he got from the crowd was terrific. He's under some pressure, isn't he? He's the man, we've all said, to win the test match for Great Britain. I think when Yeston came on, he, he ignited them a little bit. What's concerned me, though, more, Eddie, about the Great Britain side is when they've offloaded, the players have not been going forward from the offload play. They've, been, they've probably got more offloads than the New Zealand side, but the Great Britain side have been standing back and not going forward with the play. And I think if they can do that, they can create more opportunities. And I think a player like Yeston Harris, in combination with Andy Farrell, Tony Smith, who's a great support player, they can set things up. They can score points. There's times out there you can see the New Zealand side are very vulnerable defensively. They're getting back slow. They're opening up a little bit. Great Britain are probably not taking the right options. If they can do that, they'll certainly be in this game. Are they battle-hardened, the Kiwis? Well, you will have your say on who is the man of the match. 0891 33 33 13, the Sky Sports viewers' man of the match, of course. And the prize, a couple of tickets to the second test, this time next week at Bolton's Ground, the Reebok Stadium. So we'll ask you to ring that telephone number as we have all the way through this year on the Super League with around about 20 minutes of the game remaining. So who's your man of the match? Well, at the moment, the man of the match, certainly the man who's given us the biggest talking point, is the referee, Bill Harrigan. Didn't blow the whistle. Heard the siren, as did Chris Joint there. And Chris was on his way to the half-time cuppa. Joe Vangener wasn't. He was over the line. And I wonder whether this is the moment when the Kiwis clinch the test. Britain will fight back second half. Championship Boxing coming up tonight on Sky Box Office 3. Prince Nassim Hamed defends his WBO World Featherweight title against the former WBC Bantamweight champion Wayne McCulloch. For more information on that fight, call 0990-808-88. That's 0990-808-88. But right now we're just about uh, ready to get the second half of this test match underway and uh, Bill Harrigan is the central figure again in 
a touch of controversy here. He didn't blow the whistle when the timekeeper sounded. In his view, the ball was back in play. And uh, John Keir, the assistant uh, Great Britain coach, taking his place in the stand. And no doubt the message from Keir and from Andy Goodway to Chris Joint and the rest of the boys is that they have to lift their game in this second half. But Frank Endicott, if ever a man will have said to his players, play to the whistle, I bet it was Endicott. 12-2, the Kiwis lead, they restart. First tackle, second half on Dale Lawton, Quentin Pongia leading from the front, as he has done from the very first whistle. Pretty important that Great Britain get really into the swing of things early. They need points on the board, they know that. Andy Goodway would have explained that to them. And let's hope that they do just that and push that incident only seconds before the half-time break. Well, Great Britain starting this uh, second half, ten points in arrears, and they probably know as well as anybody that only three times have sides won the first test and then gone on to lose the series. 1908, Great Britain won the opener at Leeds, then lost the next two. 1961, the Kiwis won in Leeds, lost the next two. 89, the Kiwis won at Old Trafford, lost the next two at Ellen Road and Wigan. Well... Oh, it's great play by Connolly. One and one, Richard Barnett, full-back. Didn't expect that. This is where we have to launch it now, trying to catch the, uh, the, the Kiwis, should I say. Great work by the big centre. Big hit by Pongi on Dale Lawton. Henry Paul in there also pretty quickly. Cunningham just offloads the ball at dummy half. This is Farrell. Such responsibility resting on Andy Farrell's shoulders as well. Connolly dummy half. Smith gives it a bit of width. This is Harris. McCracken's all round him. Just pops the ball over the top to Newler. Keeps the momentum going, but great chase back there by Robbie Paul. Well, you, also, you already could see there, positive play. Harris is the key man, that is for sure. It will now leave Andrew Farrell the chance. Oh, that's Connolly has claimed the ball, high ball, but the ball's gone to ground, and Henry Paul has picked it up for the Kiwis. For a moment there, I thought the door had opened for Britain. Well, another missed opportunity, but yet again, the scrambling defence from the Kiwis is excellent. Well, this is where Britain now have to keep the New Zealanders penned deep in their own territory. Stacey Jones flicks the ball into the arms of Wickey. Here come the Kiwis again down that right-hand side with Hoppy. Wonder what was said at half-time in the dressing rooms. Here's Bill. Well, as you can imagine, Eddie, a lot of the talk in the Great Britain camp was about that try just before half-time that uh, Bill Harrigan awarded to the New Zealanders, but it's on the scoreboard and they've got to pick themselves up now. They are looking for Robbie Harrigan. Robbie falls away down the right-hand touchline. Robbie Paul's gone past Radlinski, dumps the ball inside. from a British point of view, Hoppy puts it down. You can say that again. The skill from Paul there, look at that beautiful run from dummy half. Three missed him. He kept his composure back on the inside. Well, Tony Smith applied the pressure there to Robbie Paul and Hoppy. Well, could that be the moment that Great Britain start to come back in because I feel that if Hoppy had scored then, it would have been a mountain that we could not have climbed. Well, they've been playing music all the way through this test match, Steve-O. Where is the theme music to the great escape? I wonder the, whether that might be it. Let's go back down to Bill. Great Britain looking for Bill Harrigan to do them a few favours in actual fact. He didn't before half-time, but they're worried about the New Zealanders slowing down the play the ball. They're looking to speed that area up and hoping that he's going to penalise the Kiwis. Connolly on the break this time now. Well, perhaps he's got a warning first. It would be nice to have the Kiwis down at 12, any, but it's the first chance. But what a great run here from Gary Connolly. The first chance that he's had to break away from this strong defence. Caught one in the face there, he did well. Kearney got back, but this is where Kearney hangs on. And that's gamesmanship, and the referee, if all right, if he doesn't yellow card him, he should immediately have a word with him. Quick tap penalty, trying to catch the Kiwis on the back foot. O'Connor with the drive in, tackled by Keeney. Here now is Cunningham trying to plunder one. Cunningham with the strength to 
within one metre of the line. Robinson into the arms of Smith. On it goes wider. This is Farrell. Now it's Harris. Harris showed it and shows it this time to Connolly, but suddenly Britain have lost the momentum again. They've gone from within a metre of the line and they're now nearly 20 away. They'll build again, though, here with Lawton. Strong defence once again. Joe Vangener in quickly. Four tackles gone. Cunningham to Farrell. He switches the direction of the attack with Tony Smith. It's opened up for Smith. Smith within another metre and a half of the line again. And Chris Joint is a dummy half. Poor pass. Farrell. Back it goes. Through the hands. Radlinski, but he had to delay a moment and then lost it. Just under pressure, play on, said Harrigan, and rightly so. But what a wonderful tackle by Henry Paul and Smith just previous to this. That just shows you the pressure of Test Match football. Redlinski could not control it. But again, this scrambling defence by the New Zealanders has been just outstanding today. And this is a good run from Iro. Connolly went for him, and I think Connolly has either twisted an ankle or pulled a muscle. And the referee looks at the touch judge. And Iro disputes the call from the touch judge because the referee has put the scrum down for the knock on, and I think he might have a little case. Well, he could have, but it's still not the referee. He also has to play to the whistle. Well, the ball was down there for about 10 seconds as Iro said, Hey, come on. Let's just get on with the game. Give me the penalty, and you hear the referee saying, We'll just get on with the game. Rightly so. Here's Harris. Good long pass, New Love. New Love, can he break them through? That's a great break from New Love. Just ankle tap. The tackle's still not completed. Now it is, and New Love didn't panic. The Kiwis are, though. That ball surely wasn't played properly. Britain aren't arguing with that. This is Harris. Sculpthorpe into the arms then of Connolly. Wonderful tackle from Halligan. Sculpthorpe dummy half. Harris, well, we've had the chances early in the second half. Smith, good defence, Wiki and McCracken. First it was Connolly, then we saw Paul Newlove show his speed and strength. He was just ankle tap when it looked as though he was heading for the line. Jointed well, he found Cunningham. Cunningham gives it to Senior, and Senior scores! Keith Senior grounds his reappearance in the Test Match jersey with his second try for Great Britain and that will give the British hope for the rest of this second half all the pressure has told in the end and John Keir is club coach now assistant coach to Andy Goodway see Senior repay the faith that's the reason why they put him out wide on the wing and it was Connor Newland's break that put them in this position Joint did well, so did the hooker out he goes there, Hoppy was nowhere. Logan Swan was sweeping, but it was far too late. Again, we see Sean Hoppy caught. In the first half, he just got a fingertip to it. But not on this occasion. Hoppy could see he'd been sucked in to go to Cunningham. It was a beautiful pass from the hooker. Great Britain are back in this. This is the break that made it. Look at the strength there. It was an ankle tap by Logan Swan that just brought him down desperation stuff but at last great britain from this position joins hot to the hooker he did well coming in there good offload see you later mr hoppy senior put the boys back well keith senior got a try in his test debut against papua new guinea in october 1996 was subbing the first test in auckland on that tour but proving there why he's got 19 tries for sheffield this year and farrell has missed, and that's probably one of his worst kicks of the year. But Britain are back within striking distance now, six points to 12. There you see it, four defenders come in, soon as the hooker gets it away. Hoppy, all on his own, Senior says thanks. But what a great build-up, they deserve that. Keith Senior, Sheffield Eagle, second try for Great Britain. And just what Andy Goodway will have wanted. Was that out in the fall or did Logan Swan carry it over the line? I think he's carried it over the line in the view of Bill Harrigan. 
He's starting to do Great Britain a few favours. But he You're jumped right. from the field of play. He did right. Now, if he'd have had his foot over the line, didn't realise that. Moves forward, Logan Swan. He looked at the big screen then, Logan Swan. And he realised he'd been caught. Well, full credit to the British boys to come back. There's nothing worse than concede a try just before half time, and you couldn't get any well closer to the hoot, and it was after it. Great Britain attacking down the left hand side again with New Love, seeing a bit more of the ball. The big centre, he finds Senior. Senior then on, it goes to Smith. Further in field to Harris, and Harris is wrestled to the ground by a great tackle from Logan Spawn. Robinson into the arms of his captain Farrell who looked out to the right hand side there was nobody there so Farrell had to take the tackle huge possession in Britain's favour the start of this second half Smith back to O'Connor he bounces off four he bounces off two oh he put one away this is Connolly grumbling defence now from New Zealand Kearney picking up the legs and just flicking them down Cunningham Farrell it goes out wide again Harris lovely ball work from Terry Connor. He flattened one of the Kiwis that made them short in defence. New Love's finish was quite superb. Absolutely sensational stuff. Harris now playing in his usual position at loose forward. They used the dummy runner. They used the pass out wide. Harris, see how he jinked it. There were three defenders there. Hoppy was having a nightmare. Took the dummy. He went shopping at the chemist. He didn't. Paul Newlove with the try, and unbelievably, only his second ever try against the Kiwis. But Britain have struck back in this test match with two tries in three minutes, and they're back in the hunt. Andy Farrell. Now, if ever there was a moment for Andy Farrell to kick one of the goals of this or any other season, the moment has arrived. And he's missed another. Well, Farrell having what for him is an unfamiliar night with the boot, but Britain are back and back with a vengeance. You can see there, Yuston Harris, when he made the step, there was three defenders. Hoppy is circled out wide, watching take the dummy. Pretty to watch. Uh oh What a great finish. Wasn't easy, but there again, Look how he stretches, makes sure that the ball carrying arm gets nowhere near the turf. But what a big carry up from Terry O'Connor. Tony Iro just on the field. So both sets of brothers used now by the New Zealanders. And uh, Terry O'Connor, there, number 17, he will have relished the moment when he put a Kiwi on his back. And then a few moments later, Newlove was over on the far side. But Paul Newlove in that moment, Steve-O, showing just what a player he is. Such strength, such commitment, and he just wouldn't be denied the four points, would he? Not only that, there's been so much written about him in the press this week, suggesting that he's one of the most unselfish players. He always offload. Obviously, Sean Hoppy has been reading that because he went out wide for senior, and Newlove put the boys back in the game. Two points in it then, we have a test match on our hands here at the McAlpine Stadium, the first of three in this Lincoln series for 1998, Great Britain and New Zealand. We knew it would be tough, we knew it would be close, and it's so it is here in Huddersfield tonight. A match that really, in the twinkling of the eye, right on the stroke of half-time, could so easily have slipped away from Great Britain but with O'Connor having driving runs in like that, it's very much back in the melting pot now. Sure is, and full credit to the British boys. Farrell, they held off him almost fatally. Okay, McCracken get off him. Get off managed to it. collar him in the end. New love dummy half. High kick from Harris. No chase, though, it's easy for Barnett. Just a little bit too far there by Yistin Harris, but 
It's interesting now in this second half that all the players virtually, apart from Keith Senior on the wing, they're in their normal positions. We've got Leary waiting to come back on. We've got Justin Harris playing as the standoff. We've got Farrell running out wide. That's where he's destructive. Stacey Jones was the dummy half. Tony Iroh into the arms of McCracken and they've lost it. It was a super hit on McCracken by Senior. And here's Harris. And he's given it now to Connolly. Oh, it's a swinging arm there. Stephen Kearney. This is the incident. McCracken losing the football. Well, Keith Senior, he's certainly making a name for himself in the second half. Smith to Radlinski. Good tackle by McCracken. Jared McCracken certainly putting himself about this McAlpine stadium tonight. Lawton stopped dead in his tracks. McCracken again. Britain sharing the work. It's important. Everybody's wanting to do their bit. O'Connor, they're hanging off him, the Kiwis. Good ball back as well. This is Cunningham. He gives it back to O'Connor. Long ball, Harris. Harris teasing them, pops it up then for Scottball. Scottball opened up. Oh, the man was pulled down in the background, was he? Yes, referee gives the penalty. Connolly was hauled down without the ball. Connolly went to the Australian Bill Harrigan, the official saying that he was pulled back. It should have been a penalty try. But you can see that Henry Paul was in front. That's the reason why he wouldn't go for that. Problems for Kevin Iro. And the Kiwis are being blitzed. The solid defence we saw in the first half has completely gone aground. There are gaps appearing, Great Britain twisting and turning in the tackle. And you can see there it was not the best attempt by the prop forward, Joe Vanagar. There he takes him out. But it's a mere fact that they are making so many inroads into this Kiwi defence now. They have to be turning the tide. Surely this is a gift too. Surely this will make it even. Well, one from three for Farrell tonight. Two from four from Farrell tonight. And Great Britain now a level. 12 points all. They've come back off the canvas. We've got World Championship boxing coming up later tonight on the box office. But like a heavyweight champion here, the British have come off the floor. It may look just little things that are going out there but again Justin Harris you saw how he created confusion there no doubt about it that Connolly was taken out the penalty had to be given the mere fact Henry Paul was there that's why the penalty try was not allowed Tony Iro suddenly there's a little spring in the British team step Look at the missed tackle count, it's mounting now for New Zealand. Let him up two, let him up 20 two. as against the six by Great Britain. Such has been the strength of the British defence. Robbie Paul gives it some air to Ruben Wickey. And Wickey has got Three. the big man, New Love, all over his back, but he still makes it to the halfway line. Picks Not the best pass. Stacey Jones, though, picks up the pieces. Oh. Frank well, Endicott quick, knows his quick, men quick. are in a test match now. Here's Henry Paul. Oh, and they've let him go. McCracken. McCracken seen a hole. It's opened up for McCracken. Senior gets back with a good tackle. It's the last one for New Zealand. This is Stacey Jones. He kicks it through and hacks it back. Still on the last. It's gone into the arms of Tony Iro. And Iro held up. Iro's held up. Tremendous defence there. Good touch screen, but I didn't see him ground it. Didn't get it down. The touch just said, go to the screen, I didn't see him ground it. And the referee, Bill Harrigan, and look at Tony Iro. he just said then, what about the screen? Well, Bill Harrigan won't go, unless there is any real doubt in his mind. And was that ball grounded? Well, it appeared that way. Come back, come back, come back. Well, they often call Bill Harrigan the Bill Harrigan. Yeah, now then, Harris on the break. A wide to Senior. Suddenly this test match has opened up and things are boiling. Defences suddenly are falling off the tackles. Chris Joyt now for Great Britain. What would he give for a try after that hour right before the half-time interval? Well, I get the impression that both sides really pull themselves apart. That's one-on-one, -on -one. that'll be play on. That's good work by Big Tony Pelletuya. Or Pelletuya. That's better. Pelletuya is a big boy anyway. Here's Kevin Iroh. 
Kevin Iro steps on the gas. Great run from Kevin Iro. This Fleary gets to him eventually. Scrambling defence now from Great Britain and Iro appealing again to Bill Harrigan. This is Jones. He gives it to Henry Paul. Henry Paul all wrapped up. Robbie, his brother at dummy half. Quentin Pongi, a good ball to Kearney. Great tackle from Cunningham. Quick play, the ball. Robbie Paul, Cunningham's down injured. That could be problems for Britain. Beautiful ball. Stacey Jones, brilliant try. Brilliant try. I think the pass was from Henry Paul. It opened up beautifully for the Kiwis. And Stacey Jones was over in a flash. Britain was stretched in defence because Cunningham was down injured. And I think it was Paul's pass that opened up the British defence. Well, you can see there that Paul run from dummy half. He really just brought them away. Kieran Cunningham couldn't get back into the first situation. Went into the tackle, and there you see it. He took full advantage, didn't he? Robbie Paul did a bit onto his brother, Henry Paul. Offloaded onto Jones. First chance for Stacey to get the machine working. Fabulous try from Stacey Jones, but it came about when Kieran Cunningham was down, and by the looks of things, he's got a shiner. It was a big hit, and it was a loose elbow. From Kearney. Kearney's elbow really got into his face, and Kearney didn't play that football. Interesting that, isn't it? Well, there's not been many played properly, Steve, oh, to be fair, either in this or the grand final last week. Whose side are you on? Daryl Halligan. Radar boot. Halligan. Number one in the world, this fellow, according to his coach, Frank Endicott. Aye, aye. Daryl Halligan is human after all. Again, it's a problem in our defence. Look, six defenders there, they've got their backs turned to him. Not surprisingly, there's a chance, especially when you've got a man down, Cunningham, a hurt. That really was a killer punch. Well, they do something so well, Great Britain, and then they just have a lapse in concentration at the vital time. Here's Fleary to run it back for the British now, but what a pass, Devo, from Henry Paul. That will have the Bradford Bulls fans purring at the prospect of next year, because it was the Paul 1-2, wasn't it? Tremendous stuff, and the way that Robbie Paul just raced away from the dummy half. I keep saying it in the first half, and I'll continue to push the effort that Great Britain, Kieran Cunningham, he got injured there, but we've not seen the quick runs from dummy half that really are needed. We've only utilised Jason Robinson, and that perhaps might be the reason that he will... Andy Goodwell, the Great Britain coach, maybe ruin the fact he doesn't have someone like Sean Long now on the bench. Tony Smith is the man who's gone to hooker to replace Kieran Cunningham while Cunningham is patched up, and there is Sean Long, the man steve has just talked about, not included in this test match, but I wonder whether he will be in the two that follow. 63 minutes of this first test gone, and votes now invited for the man of the match on 0891 33 33 13. It's the Sky Sports viewers' man of the match, the one that really counts. Two tickets to the second test at Bolton, two tickets to the second test at Bolton next Saturday night, and if it's as good as this, I rather fancy the house full signs will be up at the Reebok. What a terrific match this has been so far, and it's not over yet. Here's Iro, Tony oh, Iro to Paul, Kevin Iro. Surely. Well, I think the three officials out there were the only ones that didn't see this. Here's Jones, kick over the top, there's danger here. Radlinski has lost it, but he's lost it on Furley. Pushed him out, went for the man rather than the football. But it was a beautiful chip over the top, wasn't it? And you can see there that uh, Henry Paul, his feet when he's off the ground, you have to go to the football, you cannot touch the man. It's a rule that was brought in uh, last season to ensure that, especially full-backs and wingers taking the ball there, it's really dangerous to be tippled over while you're mid-air. It's a good rule, too. Well, let's get the news of Kieran Cunningham's injury. Bill, 
Cunningham in the Great Britain dressing room at the moment, having stitches put in a nasty cut on his uh, left eyebrow, which uh, he's also got a touch of concussion, legacy of that stray elbow when he went in for the uh, tackle on Stephen Kearney. Unlikely that Cunningham will be coming back, Tony Smith taking over the hooking duties. And Great Britain in possession with Tony Smith, flicks it then to joint, on it goes to Farrell, out wider still to Skullthorpe. OK, leave him, leave him! been a wonderful Senior. wonderful defensive effort by the big center Ruben Wickey not only he's very strong and fast going forward but some of his defense has been outstanding tonight Farrell looked out wide looking for senior oh the Kiwis two men went for it Barnett eventually took the ball but I think he cleaned one of his own men out as well oh Robbie Paul felt that did he ever but courageous not only from uh, Barnett but also by Keith Senior and relief for the Kiwis Robbie Paul was the meat in the sandwich then between Senior and Barnett only New Zealand's second penalty that Steve-O well they've uh, conceded uh, quite a few giving away some silly penalties now then that was lost it was a huge tackle by four men and new love is back for Great Britain and suddenly now the Kiwis are on the back foot again. Harris, Farrell, Schofor, Connolly, showed it to Radlinski and kept hold himself. That's Nathan Kalis with that tackle. Here's Farrell, they're now going to attack the left-hand side with Harris. Not the best pass, it came off the chest of Simon Horton. I think that uh, Harris wanted to use Horton as a dummy runner. He wanted the ball to go behind. You can see Newlove was the man expecting it. First dummy runner you saw was joint back on the inside. I'm afraid Horton he thought he was going to be a dummy too. Well, that's a bad mistake. Gilmore comes back on and he takes the place of Chris Joint, the St Helens captain, so the Young Player of the Year gets the opportunity to stamp his mark on this test. Well, it's the likes of Lee Gilmore and, of course, the big running second row of Simon Horton out wide. And with Harris and Farrell feeding long balls, I think we're still in with this game. Now then, Henry Paul, you can't let him run like that, and Britain should know that. Well, they've got to start looking this first and second marker. Jones held on. Kales gives it then to Wiki. Now Wiki been big in defence. Now he's on attack. Just less than 13 minutes of the test match to go. Jones to Kearney. And Kearney's got Skullthorpe and Horton on his back, but still makes five priceless metres. The bang in front of the sticks. Wonder whether they'll fancy a one-pointer. No, they're running it with Jones. Out wide it goes. That was Kalis, further wide to Hoppy, and Newlove was the man who got the telling tackle in. They're within 10 metres of the line. Watch for the kick. There it is from Jones, beautiful crossfield pass, a kick, they've loaded up this far wing, Robinson went for it, but Halligan claimed it, and With the handover. it's the turnover. Well, that was a great kick, but well taken by Halligan, trying to kid the referee by have to make him hit in the ground, pass it to the wrist guy, Robinson. They stacked this swing, hadn't they, the Kiwis? That was another planned move. Radlinski. Oh, they're all piling in in the tackle there, and Radlinski ducked. It was a good job he did too. Here's Gilmore. Well, it didn't surprise me that the Kiwis are attacking Jason Robinson. He's not the tallest person, of course. That's a great run from Tony Smith. That's a fabulous run from Tony Smith, but a wonderful tackle from Richie Barnett. That's what we've needed all throughout this game. Now we can apply the pressure. It's the last tackle, though. And here's Harris. He dabs it through. Was he tripped there? Was Harris tripped? He says he was, and the referee agrees. He's given the penalty. Well, maybe he wasn't tripped, but he was certainly taken out. If he was tripped, it surely should have been a red card. No, no, he wasn't tripped through. I think he just caught the left arm of one of the Kiwis. There's a trailing leg. Well, either way, surely they'll go the power play, not take the two on offer, and, and they have. They are, and here's Fleary. Now use it for your butt. And pull you to you, gets the first tackle in, second football on the pitch. Referee wants it cleared, now it is. Here come Britain again. Harris, flat run, dragged Connolly onto it, but watched all the way by Iroh. 
Harris is the dummy half. And Harris attacks the short side, flicks it back then to O'Connor. Big Terry O'Connor goes for glory. Robinson, Smith, Farrell, Farrell, almost through. And again, this scrambling defence, Ruben Wickey's been massive in defence. Smith again, Tony Smith, flicks it back. This is Gilmore, space for him to work. He keeps the movement going with Scofall. Britain have stopped still. Harris, Harris, waiting to prize the opening. It comes to Fleary. Play on. Fleary did well there. He juggled it, but it was in a backward motion. That's the last one. Oh, Pongier trying to get one into Fleary. No love lost there. Here's Farrell into the in goal, looking for Senior, the big man. Bounces. Troy oh, put it down. New love put it down. No try. Will it be deemed a knock on by Great Britain? Hoppy under a lot of pressure from Senior, and I think it came off Senior's hands. And it definitely came off New Love going forward as well. Well, what a great kick. But a tremendous fight back by Great Britain. All that hard work, though, it was just one lapse in concentration that allowed the two Pauls to combine. 0891, 33, 33, 13 for the man of the match at the moment. It's the Henry Paul, it's the uh, Stacey Jones try created by Henry Paul that separates these two sides. Who's your man of the match? 0891, 33, 33, 13. Yes, he did. He did have a go. Ball stolen. Penalty sheer, New Zealand. Sheer desperation there. Britain realising they need the football very, very quickly. Sculthorpe was the man that was dragging the ball away. He was spotted by Bill Harrigan. Tense times for the coach and his assistant. Looks the calmest man in the McAlpine Stadium, though, Andy Goodway, doesn't he? Cunningham's back on the bench with the uh, head bandaged and some stitches in the eyebrow. The news from Bill, though, he's not going to appear in this... Uh, remaining eight minutes or so well he was quiet in the first half but he certainly did his bit whilst he was out there in the second stanza kiwis on the charge again frank endercott knows that he's just uh, eight minutes or thereabouts from a, an important win pull you to you Almost through a giant of a 19-year-old, Jones, diminutive figure, Henry Paul on to Kearney, who comes back off the right foot. Beautiful ball, that's a beautiful pass, and that's a wonderful try from Robbie Paul, and I think that's the test. I think the Kiwis have wrapped up this test, and I think Frank Endercott knows it too. Robbie Paul with the try, his second for his country, but it was brilliant play. The final pass was wonderful. This is the reason why he's qualified and classified as the best offloading forward in the world of rugby league. As Eddie has just mentioned, sheer skill, sheer class, absolutely outstanding. Stacey Jones did well to pick up the ball on the half volley. Old fashioned, some people may say. Basic rugby league football, others may add. Either way, it's effective. It's pretty to watch. The dummy, the step, the twist in the tackle, the offload, despite the effort from Lee Gilmore. Robbie Paul, unfortunately for the British men, could have swung it the Kiwis way yet again. Robbie Paul celebrating, and that is the 200th try scored by New Zealand in test matches against Great Britain and it was scored by Robbie Paul and Daryl Halligan from bang in front well he won't miss this so the test suddenly goes flying away from Great Britain again 22 points to 12 Kearney and Robbie Paul with the 1-2 absolutely superb this under the pressure from Lee Gilmore to be able to twist the upper body strength quite superb. Stay Without on. doubt, the world's best Stephen Kearney for offloading in the forwards. And they don't come much better to finish either than Robbie Paul. 
Well, it may be disappointing for British fans. It must be a delight for the Bradford Bulls fans for next season. The two Pauls have combined in the second half, especially late in this game, to just have the killer punch. Don't suppose Stephen Keeney would be available as well, would he? Because he is a talent, the number 12 in the all-black Kiwi jersey. This now is Simon Horton. Five and a half minutes to go. Can Britain mount yet another comeback? Harris. Harris with a little step. Keeps the ball alive to Cowie on the bounce. He then hands it on to Horton. To be fair, that has not been one of the highlights for Great Britain in this game, is the fact that uh, when we make the half break, a bit of an interference touch judge on, a bit of a fracas after the ball had gone, but we're making the half break. Our support player hasn't been all that good. Number one from New Zealand came in and punched uh, one of the British players. We've got a penalty here going to Great Britain. Yes, it's it, number, number one. one. Well, you heard that there's a, a penalty coming Great Britain's way, and it's Richie Barnett who's been picked up by the, the touch judge. Well, he's called time off. Smack, so I just get out of game. Right. And he goes at Cowie yet again. Hit him with a big one. Cowie is offloaded, and the fullback decided to have another okay, crack at the big prop forward. Terry O'Connor plays the ball to Tony Smith, and it goes to Farrell. Here now again is Harris. Back it goes once more to Smith. Radlinski did well to hang on to that. Here's New Love. New Love is dry, breathes hope into the British camp. Senior. Well, he's played his part as the winger Keith Senior. They've got to keep this ball alive at all times now. Got to take the gamble. Just keep it going. Here's keep Harris. support. Harris again to Gilmore. Gilmore stabs it through, looking for the speed of Robinson. Did Robinson get a touch on that? He'll give this. Or will he go to the screen? He'll hand it on to the video referee. Okay, the crowd would have celebrated. Robinson is at the moment on his knees. Hello, he hasn't. Terrence. Who got the touch on this? Robinson. Yep. Oh. Now then, where did Halligan's uh, right arm come from? Halligan, uh, no, Robin, well, Robinson, then Halligan, then Robinson, Robinson try, I'm confident. That sounds like a Brit to me. It was a beautiful kick though by Lee Gilmore. It was, here's the decision and the try is given to Robinson. The Kiwis will feel hard done by about that. But on the uh, nod of the video ref, Jason Robinson gets his sixth test try. Good play though. Combination, beautiful kick by Lee Gilmore. As I mentioned, they've got to gamble at everything here. The debut boy, Lee Gilmore, showed all the composure. Neat kick. And Farrell misses with another. It has not been Andy Farrell's night with the boot. That would have put them back within four points. As it is, it's a converted try that Britain need to level this first test. Well, surely they'll go for the short kick, but this is the replay. Harry Shed again. Look at the composure there of the youngster Lee Gilmore. What a season he's had. Not only that, he's given Britain the chance. Yes, it's a short one, as we expected. They need the football. We've got it back. With Gilmore, who packs it into the arms of Horton. Now Britain need one under the posts. Horton, oh, he took a big hit there. Tackle not completed. Thinking about offloading. Takes... The tackle second time round. This is Cowie. Cowie flicked out the back door. Farrell. Now it's the time for New Zealand to stand firm in defence. Great Britain with two and a half minutes to go in possession with Harris. Or to nobody. O'Connor's not the quickest, but he's quick enough. But he's right back on the halfway line now. They've gone back all that way. Here goes Cowie. This is the time now, the likes of Harris and Tony Smith. Make a beeline from dummy half, there he goes. Big hit though by Pongia. Desperate defence. Time to bite the fingernails for the British coach Andy Goodway. Here's Farrell, and Farrell with a crossfield kick. Oh, Halligan's put it down, Robinson! That's back to zero on the tackle count. The 
pressure got to Halligan there. Here's Gilmore. Gilmore gets away from Barnett. Away from Halligan and on it goes to Connolly. And they keep it alive again via Smith to Harris. Harris trying to chink up the middle. Tony Smith. Andy Farrell gets the ball out to Gilmore. Here's Robinson. Halligan gets to him this time. Super tackle by Halligan. It had to be as well. Cowie dummy half. Farrell. Another long ball. Harris. Out wide it goes to Senior. Beautiful bullet pass. Senior on the ball inside to Horton. And again, Hoppy and McCracken. What a match McCracken's had. Sculpthorpe. Sculpthorpe to Harris. Long ball to Cowie. Now it's with Farrell. Here is Ratlinski. And Ratlinski is cleaned out by the tackle from Halligan. That's the last. Desperate moments at the end of this test match. High kick looking for Senior. Senior! Oh, if he'd have touched that down, he'd have scored. And Robbie Paul has saved the test for New Zealand. Robbie Paul cleaned Keith Senior out. Did he take the man first before he got the football? Was Senior offside? There's so many different situations that the referee can look at. But either way, Robbie Paul has got it. Oh, it's a penalty to Great Britain on the line. Well, if that's the case, then, in a try-scoring position... He was over the line, wasn't he? He's got to give the try. He can't just give a penalty there. In a try-scoring position, the try has got to be given. He's deemed that the man has been taken out before receiving the football. T.R.Y. time. Well, it isn't, and Great Britain have got to come again with Cowie. And Cowie, Pongi is all over him, and Pongi is swinging punches. Smith from dummy half, back it goes. Desperate moments in this last test. Ball flicked to ground, hacked out this way. Here comes Connolly. Six seconds remaining. Robinson, Robinson, Robinson still. Great tackle. There's the siren. That is a test match, and it belongs to New Zealand on this occasion. But there is controversy reigning here again, surrounding Bill Harrigan and his touch judge. Senior was penalised, he caught it, we believe, in goal. The penalty was given to Great Britain, but as Steve-O says, if it's a penalty in a try-scoring situation, it surely must have been penalty try. This is the replay. It's try time. How on earth the referee cannot give that is absolutely beyond belief. Robbie Paul has taken Senior out in a try-scoring position. If you take away Robbie Paul, he would have scored. So therefore, it has to be given as TRY. Well, I tell you what, Mr Bill Harrigan won't get many Christmas cards from me or many of the British players or fans. Henry Paul, though, has played his part. It was a super test match, wasn't it? And talking points from start to finish. You have to ask why Bill Harrigan didn't go A for the video ref, if he was that unsure, and B, having taken the decision that it was a penalty, why he didn't give it a penalty try. Great Britain will feel that they have not so much lost this test match, but circumstances have conspired against them. But don't mention that in the earshot of Stephen Kearney. New Zealand have won by 22 points to 16, but there is so much to talk about, so much to look back on. But New Zealand, first blood in this three-match test series. Now then, coming up later on tonight, a reminder for you that we have World Championship Boxing on Sky Box Office 3. Prince Nassim Hamed defends his WBO World Featherweight title against the former WBC Bantamweight champion Wayne McCulloch. For more information on that fight, call 0990 800 888. That's 0990 800 888. Well, we will catch our breath and we will return with Sean McRae and Malcolm Reilly. We have got lots to discuss. We've got lots to talk about and this Arguably now the most contentious issue of this first Lincoln test. Should that have been a penalty try? Every Briton here is convinced. But the Australian who mattered, Bill Harrigan, wasn't.
Well, what a test match we have seen here. A controversy has reigned from start to finish. New Zealand have won it by 22 points to 16, and they will now know that only three times have sides won the first test and then gone on to lose the series. Great Britain hopes that it will be fourth time lucky for them. 18,500 here to see it too. Now your view is the man of the match. Stacey Jones, Gary Connolly, big game. But Keith Senior of Sheffield Eagles has won your man of the match votes. So Keith Senior is the man of the match. He scored a try as well. And here he is talking to Bill. Keith, congratulations on winning the man of the match award from the Sky viewers. But what's the feeling like in that Great Britain dressing room? It's, it's a bit quiet and it's a bit desolate, you know. We were hoping for a, to start the series off with a good victory today, but we gave them a few sloppy tries and we can take heart from this game, but we didn't do the goods. You certainly can take heart from that second half. I mean, you must feel as though that you had the chances there. Almost definitely, as I said, we're getting some sloppy tries. That one just before half time was a bit of a killer. But we came back with some good tries. We started off loading ball. When Yessi and Harris came on, he started producing a bit more attacking options. So we'll be looking at it on Monday morning and we'll be taking a lot of art from it. Well, no doubt about your first try. What about the second one? Well, the one that was ruled a penalty. How did you feel about that? Well, when I caught it, it took me out in air, so it could have been a bit of a penalty try, maybe, but... That's the debate that's going on at the moment, you agree? I was definitely, because he made no attempt to get to the ball, he just took me straight out, but the referee gave a penalty and we didn't capitalise on it. But as you say, I mean, there are positives you can take heart from going into the second test of Bolton now. Almost definitely. It, wa it wasn't such an intense game that we were expecting, so we're a bit disappointed with how we performed. So we know we can pick our game up and we will be doing the next test, which we need to. OK, Keith, thanks for talking to us. Cheers. Thank you. Sky Sports viewers, man of the match then, and the competition winner, Jacqueline Anderson from Manchester. You haven't got too far to go, Jacqueline, to Bolton next Saturday for the second instalment in Great Britain against New Zealand, 1998. What a match, what a finish, and how many talking points do you want? Now, look, it's not a question of sour grapes, not from Steve-O and I anyway. It might be from Malcolm and Sean McRae. We'll have to wait and see. But we certainly believe that there is a case for a penalty try right on the stroke of full time. Now, Keith Senior is lined up there by Robbie Paul. My instant reaction was that Robbie Paul had saved the test with this, but then the referee consulted that touch judge and he gave a penalty. Now, if he gives a penalty, Senior is surely in the act of scoring a try and it should have been a penalty try. That was our view from the commentary box. Malcolm really is a former Great Britain boss. And I'm sure, Malcolm, that had you been Andy Goodway, that would be the tune that you'd be singing right now. Eddie, it was a crucial decision and one that went against Great Britain, and they didn't deserve it. Um, it looked, quite frankly, on the replay there, that um, it was simultaneously, uh, as he was taking the ball, he certainly committed himself, and if he took him out before the ball got in his hands, and, and it's a minute uh, fraction... Uh, but you can't tackle when the man's in the air, can you? Well, absolutely not, so it must have been a try, and it should have been. Well, he's done us again, hasn't he, Bill Harrigan? I mean, that sounds dreadfully patriotic, I know, but Bill Harrigan, he's given a contentious try to the New Zealanders on the stroke of half-time, and he's now given a contentious no-try against Great Britain on the stroke of full-time. I know well, he's a pal of yours, isn't he? Bill's, Bill's <laughs> all right, you know, I mean, well, I've had my run-ins with, with referees in Australia, but, uh, you know, tonight, I, I will have to say that uh, his, his performance has been a little bit indifferent. And certainly that should have been... A draw would have been a fair result. Great Britain, full credit to them. They played very well and, uh, you know, they should be proud of their performance and uh, I'm pretty sure they'll turn it round in the second test. Well, we all hope so and I'm sure that uh, Andy Goodway hopes so as well. That's one former Great Britain coach talking. Here is the current Great Britain coach, Andy Goodway, with Bill. Andy, what's your verdict on that performance from the side? Uh, the performance was excellent, outstanding. You know, the players never, never gave in the task and... Uh, we're more than happy. We've seen we've seen what we need to see now, and we'll go on from there. And of course, one or two controversial decisions. How do you feel about those? Notably, the try at the end of the first half when your guys were caught napping, and then the uh, incident with Keith Senior taken out at the end. Well, I think we just need to unify the laws across across the both sides of the world. I think we've we've played one set of rules today, and uh, and we've played to another. So you know, that's that's up to the people that uh, that run the game. You know, we've just got to cop whatever's coming to us, and we'll work on that for next week. What might you do different next week at Bolton? Oh, that's a tough question to ask at the moment. Um, we're, we're just going to sort of relax tonight and, and, and have a chat amongst the staff and see what we think we need for next week. But there are a lot of positives to come out oh, of tonight. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we're, we're, we're more than happy. We just, I think it's more a, a game that, that, that we, were, we lost rather than, than we're beaten in. OK, thanks a lot, Andy. You're welcome, thanks.
Well, he's so laid back, Andy Goodway. If he was any more laid back, he'd be absolutely horizontal, wouldn't he? But uh, Sean McRae 